Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday night and to the Davis's kitchen and to all of the fun things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. He's chilly. I'm Nikki. Yep. That hasn't changed. Nope, not yet. <laughs> I don't think it ever will. Um, so tonight mm -hmm. we are traveling back to 1900. Ish. Ish. <laughs> so. Part of us are. So when, part of us aren't. Right, well, yeah, he's not. Um, I am, however. Yeah. So I don't remember. Was it 2015, 16, 17, somewhere in that neighborhood? We took a trip to Maine, mm -hmm. and um, by way of well, by way of New Boston. York to Boston, to, <laughs> yeah. Then drove up so, to Maine. Um, yeah. But one of our day trips, we we kind of took the hitch to Salem, Massachusetts, Massachusetts because I'm I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. We're just gonna leave it there. I'm Scottish. Very um, much so. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Mm. And um, the history behind Salem and the witch trials has always been fascinating for me. Um, slightly morbid, but nonetheless, mm. um, as have the witch trials and things that went on in Scotland uh, many moons ago. So in that trip, I, I will say my favorite part of that trip, however, was the bewitched statue. Oh, yeah. Which has nothing to do with no. the Salem witch yeah. trials. But, but it was cute. Um, I, I will say that Salem is altogether overly commercial at this point. Um, yeah. the, the history is still there, but you really have to look for it. So uh, so anyway, when we travel, I always try to pick up a cookbook. And this one caught my attention because it is a reprint of historic cookbooks. A Costas. A Costas. Um, and it's called What Salem Dames Cooked in 1700, 1800, and 1900. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a compilation of, um, I think, three, maybe four, let me look, three, four different cookbooks, starting from 1683. Mm -hmm. um, there's one from 1730 called The Frugal Housewife. That is not me. Nope. Well, I mean, sometimes in the kitchen, maybe. Um, one from 1800 called Our Grandmother's Cookbooks. All of these were from Salem. And uh, from 1900, Our our Own Cookbooks. I don't... Dogs. Dogs. <laughs> um, love I haven't looked up the history of each of these individually. I will, I will do that, however, before I send information out to all of you through the newsletter. But... We were in we were in the mood for seafood. We've yeah. had a lot of well, we, yeah. yeah. We've had a lot of beef lately. Oh boy, yeah, that's yeah. no lie. The last couple of weeks. For couple sure. couple of burgers were cooked recently. <laughs> oh, we'll tell you that story yeah. as we get going here. Yeah, Friday night was fun. Yeah. Um, so we're doing a recipe out of the nineteen hundred uh, cookbook that's in this reprint. Mm -hmm. called, Our own cookbooks. Yep. Yeah, not uh ooh, Nantucket Scallops Chowder. And like many recipe cookery books of the time, there are no ingredients lists. There's no directions. I mean, it's all here. Um, but recipes were very much, um, you know, cut up four potatoes and add it to the pot and do this and do this. So there's very different in how we write recipes than uh, what you see now. So, but that's what we're going to cook. And we're going to stick somewhat to this. Uh, this calls for salt pork. We're using bacon. Um, this calls for sweet milk. We're using evaporated milk because it gives a very creamy consistency to chowders. Um, this calls for marble head hard crackers. We're using saltines. You're using <laughs> so, saltines or ritz? Um, and chowder saltines. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. uh, and we're using like the square saltines, but if you had oyster crackers, that would be. Um, That'd be good too. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. To use. And let's see what else was in here that, oh, this, the scallops. Oh my gosh. Remember, we're in the Midwest, so sometimes things like seafood is hard to find, um, and scallops were hard to find. So we're we're punting a bit. We have scallops, but we're punting nonetheless. Yeah. But to go with our Salem Dames mm -hmm. from 1900, mm -hmm. what are we drinking? We're drinking a Purple Witch. <laughs> I mean, we had to. We had to, because it's to. Salem witchcraft. We had to do something to do with witchery. So you want to get me some ice in my glasses? I will ice you up, baby. And give me some ice in my shaker. So to get, this is a, a, actually a very simple cocktail mix. Um, it, extremely simple. So we're gonna use vodka, two ounces of vodka per cocktail. We're drinking two vodka, two cocktails. I'm getting out of the way now. 
we're starting off with two cocktails anyway. We will have <laughs> well, more. Well, you know. We will have more. If you've been, re- you've been watching any of, any of time, our episodes, you know that one and one, done is not our game. One turns into two, which turns into three, which turns into four. So we've got vodka, two ounces of vodka per cocktail. The real the deal. Real deal. On blue curacao. Blue curacao. And it's. Oh. And it's, just, it's so it much is, better. I mean. It is so yeah, just, flavorful. If you can afford to upgrade some things in your cocktail making, upgrade. Do it. Because it's just. It's just a different experience altogether. And this is. This is the real deal. Um, and curacao is like an orangish. Mm-hmm. Flavored. And it's. Liqueur. Colored blue to market it yeah just marketing um but there is a clear curacao i mean it starts clear and you color it yeah. blue but so if this you're gonna make a brown brand you can still buy the clear but if when you, you get into um i don't want to name brands necessarily but kind of the rail mixer brands yeah you don't get the blue you don't get the clear they're clear sorry clear. is it glued it is uh yeah glued together it has solidified on and it may not come off well, I mean, we can use the other one. Oh, got it. Okay. There's not much left in there. I think. Yep, yeah, there it goes. And two ounces of grenadine per cocktail, which we have. Another bottle. We have another bottle right here. She was so happy that we were making this tonight because that way we could get rid of a bottle of grenadine out of the fridge. Yeah, I like getting rid of bottles. Thanks. She loves throwing stuff away. Clearing out space. And I love grenadine. I always have. I was the Sprite and grenadine girl. The Shirley Temple? Oh, yeah. Loved it. So now we have our cocktail in the shaker. Get it on all seated up nice and... Can rinse that out for me? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Then we just pour a little purple. Pour a little purple. And if you guys remember your Who is fourth grade or third grade art lessons, red and blue make purple. do make purple. And to that... We're going to add some Sprite for a little fizzy fizzy. Oh, something's got my nose running today. And that is our cocktail. Oops. One purple witch. The bottle is kind of weird in there. Okay. Well, Dan, Dab and Uncle Dan. Hey, welcome. So, there we go. Hey, Purple Witch. Purple Witch. Mm. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a good one. You want to try this one? Yep, you do. Mm, that Sprite adds that like, nice little tickle. Is it getting you like back here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the orange and the Sprite. Mm-hmm. I'm always after something that will balance out whatever we're eating. Your chowder is very rich. We're actually going to do grilled cheese sandwiches mm-hmm. tonight too for you. But um, so this is kind of the perfect sweetness. Acidic, yeah. Yeah, acid. mm-hmm. What is that? That orange is creamsicle ish. Creamsicle? Maybe. Is that what that tastes like? It tastes, tastes, yeah, a little bit. Like a little a, bit. Mm-hmm. almost, it, I mean, it's almost like a, um, like an icy pop. Yeah. Yeah, that's that we a, had when we were kids. You yeah. almost spot me with store. I did. <laughs> hey. That's mm. kind of what it tastes like to me. But it's very yummy. It is delicious. All right, so off to the stove. Off to the races here, yep. Oh, um, I need my lid. Okay, I'll just put my lid right there. Okay. Yet. All right, so I have... Four strips of bacon. Strips of bacon in here. Mm-hmm. Do we need to turn that light on? Mm, I don't want it to screw up. The, okay. I can try. That's yeah, fine. 
Okay, we won't. We don't want to screw things up. It's like if we touch this camera, it freezes. So we're just, yeah. we don't. We don't um, mess with it. Also, this is going to be white, and we know what that does. Yeah. It's going to blow it out. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely make these at lake time. Um, <laughs> like, we have a list. <laughs> yeah. We got a whole. We lot. have a running list of what we're going to be making at the lake. lake. Okay. Yeah, this is this is like an all day sipper. I mean, it's you know, Curacao is not very high in proof. No, but you drink enough of them, it's gonna sneak. Oh yeah, it'll it sneak up on you. All right, so we're gonna let the bacon cook and render. We're gonna leave the fat right where it's at. I'm going to chop up. Actually, I'm gonna chop up my onion first here. And I just broke my own rule and cut the root end off of it, but we'll survive. Um, I have a thing for sweet onions. If I can get Vidalia onions, I do. I use them in everything because I prefer the flavor. But with this, any white or yellow onion will be fine. Um, for some reason, sweet onions have papery, pap more papery, I'm not sure, um, skins on them, and they're kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, you do that. Thank you. So I, I broke my own rules and cut the root end off, so we're going to... Yeah, you did. What were yeah. you thinking? <laughs> I just wouldn't. Um, so anyway, slice, slice, slices, sticks, and then just cut across and you'll get to the dice. You know, we're, this is a smallish onion, so we'll have about half a cup when it's all said and done. Make sure our bacon doesn't burn. We're also going to make, because we have to have a sandwich with our chowder or we'll go hungry. You know, we didn't get these beautiful bodies by eating rabbit food. Um, so we're going to do grilled cheese with bacon. And on mine, I'm actually putting a, a spicy red pepper spread on it. Chili's fighting with the onion. I'm getting there. <laughs> So yeah, our trip to Salem, so we're we're traveling a bit and we're traveling back in time a bit and cooking from a cookbook. So it's kind of all coming together tonight. Um, there you go. Was a bit interesting. We had some really good food, I will say that. We found some good restaurants to eat in that day. And that was where I had crab cakes Benedict for the first time. Oh my gosh. That was good um, stuff. That was delicious. And then we went on into Boston. Was that the same day we went to Boston and did a few? I think so. A few historic things in Boston, and we ate at. Um, I think we did that over two days. We did. Yeah, I don't remember. Salem one day, Boston another day. We had some really good. Uh oh, I lost an onion. Really good food that trip, and we had some really good chowder that trip too. So, all right, let's turn this down to medium so I don't burn my onions up. That'd be a smart thing. Yeah. So we want to cook this long enough for the bacon to render its fat. We're going to leave it in here and let it cook with the chowder. That's right. Um, we want it to render its fat down and get the onions partially cooked. I mean, this is going to cook when it's all, you know, put together. And oh, it smells so good. I've got four little russet potatoes I need to use up. So we're going to cut them into little bite-sized dices. This one's got a bit of a bad spot, so we'll cut that out. Um, so at the end, we'll probably have a cup, maybe a cup and a half of diced potato, half a cup of onion. What did I say? Four slices of bacon yep. ultimately went in there. Oh, hey, Jen. hey Jen. You are a little late. You missed the cocktail. Oh, well, we'll do it again. We will we will catch you up yeah. eventually. One of us will. Um, we're really only making enough of this tonight for dinner and maybe lunch tomorrow. And that's a big maybe. I doubt it. It's probably just going to be enough for dinner tonight. Probably. That's okay. I don't know. I might stop it. 
three potatoes. It seems like it's going to be plenty for what we want it to be tonight. Um, these are russet, so they're pretty starchy. And you're going to want that starch to help thicken the chowder. Mm -hmm. So don't rinse them. Don't do anything like that. You don't want the starch in there. Gotcha. Let me stir up the... Yeah, I'm going to stop with the three. I don't need a fork. So we're a cup and a half-ish probably. And if you get a little, you know, brown on your onions, it's fine. We're actually not doing too bad at all. Yeah, usually it, there's enough salt in. We use bacon from um, Winnemans in St. Labore. There's mm -hmm. usually enough salt that it kind of keeps your onions from getting too, too brown too quick. Because that's what salt does to your vegetables when you add it. Okay, was that all you needed to chop up? It is. Okay. So we're going to... Think about what we need later. Okay, I'm moving this out of the way. So we've done, we did corn chowder one night on the show. We did clam chowder. Maybe I, think we did, I think we did clam chowder up in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so really, I mean, chowder it's, is kind of chowder. Got, yep. Yeah. But tonight we're going to... Add a little bit of wine to the chowder. Is that the white wine? That is a dry white Chardonnay. Uh -huh. Yeah, Chardonnay, dry white. Um, and we're going to add, how much is this? Uh, it's like roughly a pint, a little, little more than a pint of evaporated milk. Um, and I like, number one, I like these containers. They can't you see can't that see container them. over there. I like these containers because if you don't use it all. Nope, still don't see it. If you don't it use it all. Over there. Okay, coming back this way. Um, that container. You can close it up. Tonight I'm going to use it all. And that's why I bought the size. And if we decide it's not enough, we'll add some milk to it or maybe a little bit of water. Because I did not finish my conversation last week about evaporated milk. Um, you actually can add water to evaporated milk to get to what milk really is. Oh, yeah. The Whole consistency, milk. yeah. Um, so this is a little concentrated. Which is why I like it. It's creamier than just plain old whole milk. But also shelf stable. Um, okay, so we're going to let that cook. We don't want to boil it. We want it to simmer. Long enough for some. You get it? Oh, that's. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not. It's yeah. fine. They'll see it in the photos. Yep. Sorry, folks. And how are we going to move burners? Nope, oh, not that burner. That, that one. Switching it over. Mm. And we'll just hang on to it. What's going on there? Grilled cheese is going to go on here. Oh, when are we doing that one? We have to cook the bacon first. Mm -hmm. Is the bacon going to go on that side and the grilled cheese on this side? Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to think how I can cook the bacon and the grilled cheese at the same time. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Might have to cook the bacon first. I think we're going to have to cook bacon first. Taking this off. I actually forgot we were cooking bacon. <laughs> if that would tell you anything. It's a good thing I said something. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would have been in trouble. You would have. Okay. Go a little right. skillet. I had to thaw bacon, so let me get a couple more pieces out. <sighs> that is a good cocktail. So I will let you put the end of the bacon in the fridge. Okay, I can do that. Okay. And I'm going to save myself a little, a little bit of work here and some space. See, I knew what we were having for dinner tonight. Yeah. Yep. 
A new bacon shirt. Brand new bacon shirt. Where'd you get that bacon shirt? Schwabel printing. He has more. He does. In Murphy's, bro. Yep. It's Turn around so they can see the back. Yeah. Back. It's a perfect bacon shirt. Perfect bacon shirt for eating bacon. It is. I only have a few bacon shirts, like four. four. It's not like I like bacon or anything. You would think that, you know, I'd have like 200 of them as much as I like bacon. But <laughs> well, I only have like four. I mean, we don't want them to all look alike. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, these are going on sandwiches, so I really don't care what they look like at the end of the cooking process. So I'm cramming them in here. Because we all know that bacon shrinks. It does. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. So what's everybody eating for dinner tonight? Yeah. Oh, nobody's saying anything. Oh, well, they're, we ran them off already. They don't want to tell us what they're eating. Maybe it's a secret. Yeah, it might be. They know what we're eating. They do. And drinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to kind of watch our chowder because I turned it on high. We just really want this to cook long enough to cook the vegetables and thicken up. At which point we will put our scallops in. Yep. Baked sweet potato and arugula salad. This one person. I think that was Jen. I'm not positive. I kind of stepped away before I saw who it was. That sounds good. That's not delicious. Um, oops, sorry. I made a noise. I think it's okay. Well, the bacon is frying, however, I can assemble. What did you do with my uh, measuring cup? Never mind. I need to assemble. Avengers assemble. I am kind of excited about the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Is that sad? <laughs> Mom wants to know if I named the cocktail after her. The, the purple, purple witch. witch. Well, you do have a purple room. <laughs> so. A spinach salad. What also sounds yummy. It does sound yummy. You want me to make four of these? You want more than one? No, I'm good with one. So while the bacon is frying, it'll take it you, a few minutes. Well, you might have stuff. been an inspiration for the cocktail. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I think you're pretty fortunate, mother, mothers-in-law. Yep. We both were. Have been. Could have been worse. You could have had a smother like, you know, Beverly Goldberg. Yep. <clears throat> okay, folks, these are... A wee bit dangerous. Oh, crap. Okay, this is what happens when you step away from the cauldron. Yep, quit doing that. Because you've got milk in here. It's going to foam up. Fish with potatoes and peas for Aunt Deb and Uncle Dan. That sounds good, too. That sounds yummy. Yeah. That All was right. kind of the inspiration with seafood -ish Yeah. tonight. Kind of go a little... And then we went with a chowder. We were seafood hungry, and I was happy to find that. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of white pepper in here. I don't like putting black pepper in white sauces. That's just, I don't know. It's just. I don't mind it. And I will probably put black pepper in my bowl. Probably, yeah. But, I, you know, I like white pepper. And... So the recipe is two ounces vodka, two ounces curacao, two ounces roses, grenadine, shake. And it comes out this nice purple. Yep. Because red and blue make purple. Yep. Good news about rendering all this Topless bacon. Topless Because I will have bacon grease. For the nice fizziness. Down. Okay, I'm going to turn that down. It's yeah. Getting good. You need more? No, nope, not yet. Not yet. I will. You will need more. I'm going down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm to a point where I can add the scallops. It's my favorite direction. You heard that. 
I did say it. No. I had another conversation about you today in your <clears throat> wily ways. Yeah. Awesome. I was just on the tip of her tongue all day. I was complaining about the hamburger fiasco. What fiasco? Uh, There's no oh fiasco. We fed. You can tell them. We fed. Um, Hello, Mr. Stoner Dude. Hey, what? This is Mr. Stoner Dude. Says thank you for all the work you give us. Keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we fed what seventy people Friday yeah. night. I am gonna add a little bit. We did moscacholi. Pardon. It's all right. Let's get out of the way here. Oh, actually, I'm just gonna add the end of the whole evaporated. Milk. There we go. So we moscacholi. We did butter burgers. Uh, we had. Toasted raviolis, we had scalloped corn, and we had, what else? Uh, tater tots. With beer cheese, tater tots. Beer cheese. Beer cheese covered tater tots. tots. And, and a Greek salad. Greek salad. I didn't have Costas any of that. Costas is Greek salad, if you're still yeah. on. Yeah, say. Costas is Greek salad. But yeah, it was a good time. But the, uh, the cook here is not a short order. But we had the, I had, I had my friend Jill helping. Man, it took us a minute to find a rhythm. Woo. But we did. We managed. Oh, uh, our stream usually is a, we go aim for about 45 minutes to an hour. We started at 630, Mr. Stoner Dude. So anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Other than that, we don't know. <laughs> we, as long as it takes to cook, it's pretty much how long it takes. Yeah. We aim for about an hour. Yeah, we try to keep everything about an hour. All right. Costa says he's making Greek bolog bolognese sauce over spaghetti. Oh, that's wait. So, what's the difference between the Greek and the Italian? Yeah, what is the difference? Olives? Possibly. Possibly olives. What is a Greek bolognese? Oh goodness. Let's go back to. Here we go. We got. Hey, Gretchen. Hey, Gretchen. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> yeah. So there's our bacon. There's our chowder. Um, I'm going to add scallops to the chowder here just in pretty short order because it's about done. Yeah. So I'm kind of watching the bacon. Trying not to do too much at once here. Um, so here in the Midwest, we could not find just plain old scallops, fresh or frozen. Sometimes I can find them frozen, but that did not happen. So they're over there. Um, so we ended up with um, a brand that comes already sauced. So these are sea scallops with white wine and herb sauce, which we decided would be fine with the um, chowder because I already have the white wine and everything kind of in there. So these are a, a good punt, a good substitute. <laughs> Um, and this is a 12 and a half ounce bag, so I'm just shy of a pound, um, but certainly plenty to to put in our chowder. What did you use? Look oh. back there, yeah. So let's see. I'm on this hand. I'm going to pull these so, off. Frozen. Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you. So mm -hmm. this is the size of the sea scallop. Um, you could use these in this, or you can use the little teeny bay scallops. So they're, they're a little bit sweeter. Um, but because these are already sauce, they kind of have the sauce sticking to them frozen. We're just going to dump all of that in because these are still frozen. It's going to bring the temperature down in our chowder quite a bit, which is why I wanted to make sure everything was cooked before we got there. Um, we'll have to kind of heat it, heat it back up a bit. Chili's taking the bacon off before it burns. Just, bar <laughs> just the, barely. Yeah. Put the pan back if you want. You can put a pan back here in here in the sink so that you can get your um, these so you can have this yeah which you, one do you want the flat and then flip them back so they can see that okay thank you mm -hmm. Perfect. Alcosta says 
It, that's a great question. He thinks that it's because we use three times the amount of garlic. Also use a cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, allspice, and fresh mint. There it is. The to up flavor it a few notches. Yeah, oh, the cinnamon's what? That's a big difference. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it does feel like we just talked, Gretchen. That's true. It, it does. <laughs> and then Friday's meal was fantastic. It had plenty of cream puffs. Yeah, we had lots of cream puffs that available. Cream puffs That's good, good, though. All right. So we're going to turn this back up to a little bit closer to medium, and we're going to let it cook until the scallops thaw. The sauce that was already on the scallops will be beautiful in this. I can see the herbs already kind of coming to the surface here. So I'll cover it back up. We'll just kind of keep a watch on it. I can't believe that the Greeks use more garlic than the Italians. Oh, That's, I can. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So you over there now with your... Oh. Mm -hmm. Top off time. Yes, I'm over here now. Okay, hold on. Yeah, top off your cocktail. Okay, thanks. So one more time for the recipe for the cocktail. Two ounces. Vodka, two ounces, curacao, two ounces, grenadine, shake, 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 sonora, shake your body around a couple times at least. And then top it off with some Sprite. Top it off with some Sprite, or Sprite seven Zero, 7-Up, whatever, yeah. whatever kind of lemon lime cola you're wanting of choice. Ours just happens to be a Coca-Cola product. Because I like Sprite. Yeah, we like Sprite. Okay. So there we go. So we're back over there now. <clears throat> Table three. So I am going to spice mine up a little bit with a roasted red pepper and artichoke spread. Um, it's actually a tapenade, so oh. we're, we're a little bit closer to Kosas' area right now. Going, Not going, quite all the way. But going Greek closer. on your grilled cheese, are you? No, going a little Spanish on the grilled cheese. Uh. I'm assuming you don't want any. God, no. I okay. want cheese, bacon, and well, butter. I like things you know you like fancy stuff and this is just plain old you know wheat bread honey wheat i like good food i am only going to put it on one side though i don't want to overkill i like good food too but you know i don't need to be fancy pants in it with oh come on Fancy pants is good. I'm not going to fancy pants the kids either. Uh, she won't. She won't appreciate the fancy pants. And no. I want butter though. I got the butter right here. Okay. Dude. All right. Well, I'm just making right, sure. So we're using um, cabbage cabot because it's as close to Salem as we can get with cheese. Um, seriously sharp white cheddar. Mm -hmm. At least two slices. But you know, pile more on if you want. I'm going to pile more on because I want. Did you already put the scallops in? Yeah, scallops oh, are in. Cool. I must have missed it. And, oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay. So we're going to pile two on the underside. That leaves me three left. Oh, I know where those three are going. It's a lot of cheese. <laughs> Got to save room for the bacon. And, well, you want to sandwich your bacon in between the cheese slices. So when the cheese melts, it glues the bacon in. That's right. You don't want a whole lot of grease on your bacon either. This is like perfectly crunchy. There's a piece in here that might be a little. There hard might done. be one or two that are a little over, overdone, but that's okay. We want them crunchy. And kind of break it if you need to to make it flat. Yeah. Don't fit. I like the burnt ones. I'll stick that that's, on mine. I like it crunchy. I don't mind burnt. I don't either. It's going into grilled cheese. It's going to be perfect. Look at that. Mm. Oops. Oh, I know who gets the extra pieces. And what it's, extra pieces? And it's not that golden thing down by your feet. It's not golden thing down by my feet. There's an extra piece. Oh, you want here? You want that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, I'll <laughs> eat that myself. <laughs> so we got extra. Let me wash my hands real fast. We got extra. We got bacon. A little extra, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Cheese on top. Sliced cheese is just always easier. And, I mean, use it's grilled cheese, folks. Use whatever cheese you feel like using. Mm-hmm. I have a whole lot of American. 
Yeah, so what, like 66 hamburgers the other night? Holy Moses. Mm -hmm. Hope I got. Mm -hmm. well, about 64 because you were making them eight at a time. Right. Okay, so here's here's a trick. I have room temperature butter. Mm -hmm. They can barely see that butter, though. Well, that's okay. We're going to put on the top. Smearing it with butter. Smear with butter. Some people do mayonnaise. I mean, here, here's the deal. No, we're not it's, doing mayonnaise. No, I know, but it's grilled cheese. Do mm -hmm. whatever the heck you want. We're just making them so we have you know, a little extra. But you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to do a grilled cheese. We're going to show you. Um, if you learn nothing at all. The reason you want fat, butter, mayonnaise, margarine, fat on the outside is because that's what helps you toast the bread. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you just kind of get dry toast and ugh. Yeah. Okay, we so don't want that. Gonna make sure do we want this on, on low or do you want this on medium? I want it on low, medium. Medium, low is fine. Okay. Now, if you put butter on your skillet. On your, your cooktop. Cooktop or whatever it is you're using. Mm -hmm. Griddle, whatever. Then you can like kind this. of avoid having to butter the other side and having everything fall apart because that's typically what happens. So use a silicone brush and just yeah. smear that butter all over the place. And then these guys can go down butter side up. Oh. We're going to kind of cram them on here. Well, that'll fit. It'll fit. Four. Easy. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to let those sit. And we're going to move this out of and the way. Know. We're going to check our, check our chowder. Mm -hmm. Oh, something's making my nose run tonight. There we go. Hi, Pooch. I don't know if you can see her. No, they can't see her. Yeah, well, I have a rat terrier sitting at my feet here. She needs to be moved. Come on. Come on. Yeah, she gets underfoot. But if you have dogs, you know that they get underfoot. Okay. So our chowder's done. Um, this is probably on the thin side. You want thin? You want me picking it? That's fine. Okay. I don't mind chowder on the thin side. So. No. It's not stew. No, but if you like... Doesn't have to be thick, yeah. thick, thick. Okay, so our scallops are nice and done. They're still tender. They're not overcooked. Mm -hmm. So this is finished. We're going to taste test un momento. While our grilled cheese... Don't smash your grilled cheese immediately, by the way. Nope. I mean, you know. It's your grilled cheese, so. Right, yeah. I'm just wanting to taste the sauce. The sauce or the, yeah. But I also want to let it sit for a minute before I do. Yeah, it's going to be a little warm. Woo! Oh, yeah. Wow. Like, sometimes I surprise myself. Mm -hmm. Don't ask. I know. It's odd. It is odd. I know she's a hell of a cook, folks. So she never, ever, 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 ever surprises me. But oh, what's that? Tongs. Dang. Spatula tongs. That's loud. Um, invest in a set. A pair. Sorry, I know it's loud. I wanted to get people's attention. Like, totally invest in them. Okay. Th nobody saw that. What'd you do? What I do? I took a... I almost took a drink. Why did you almost take a drink? I don't know. I was worried about my grilled cheese. Oh, well, shame on you. You can't almost take a drink on this show. Yeah, there we go. You got your fancy tongs? Make them work. Mm -hmm. Now, we start pressing down. And squishing them. Mm -hmm. And that a little, little extra cheese, or cheese. <laughs> Give me another drink, Chili. Yeah. Little extra um, pressure will help that cheese melt just a wee bit. Oh. And you want a little low and slow here. Don't don't rush it. No. Enjoy the ride. It's grilled cheese. You want it to melt. That looks so good, so nice and brown. And that's all just from putting the, the butter down on the, the yeah, skillet. You don't it. have to like fight with the sandwich. Put the butter <laughs> on the griddle. Yeah. Sounds good to me. 
you've got a bacon press, use that. I've got one over here, but you can put enough pressure down on. Well, where'd that big old press go that we have? It's in the front of the window. On the window? By the window. Back behind the I got it. Let's put don't, don't drink too many purple witches. Ooh. Cast iron bacon press is always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Um, all right, I'm going to plate some chowder. You'll notice that does say lodge. It does. I use more ladles in this house. Well, yeah, I'm I'm eating this chowder over here. Yeah, that's fine. We'll probably have a little bit left for lunch. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, let's see here. Oh, this is gonna be. Eh, over. Scooch over. Hmm. Nope. It's all pixelated. Uh, we got to fix some camera issues. Let's come over here. Okay. There you no, go. Maybe you can do it over there. Trying desperately to show you guys the chowder. Oh, that looks oh, that's delicious. a little bit better. Yeah. There we go. Ta da! There's like a good four or five big old scallops in there. Mm hmm. In each bowl. Yeah. All right. Our cheese is all melty. I'm going to turn this off now. i give you the blue. Cut the blue. I'll take pictures, but I'm going to cut one of yours up. Oh, uh oh. You forgot which one's which, didn't you? I did. This is the third one. That's mine. Okay. Goodness. Shame on you. I swear. Oh, that could have been bad. <laughs> There's only one of those that's got all that good stuff in there. Thank you, Ian. We appreciate that. Ann says that the chowder looks delicious. Oh, thank you. I'm going to get a cutting board and cut on that. If you cut your grilled cheese in half, it's easier to do it on a cutting board. <laughs> I'm a diagonal person. Oh, you got to cut it that way. I like the points. It's the only way to cut it. Ta-da. So, cheese is melty, but not too they melty. They can see one of them, but not the other one, because you... There we go. Well, they're kind of warm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Woo! We're back nonsense. over here to the... There we have it. We should turn the lights up, please. Yeah, well. So we have... We have chowder. Nantucket scallop chowder mm -hmm. out of 1900 reprint of the... Sa oh, let's see. Salem, Salem Dames Cook. But this is out of the... 1900 our own cookbooks right. so four reprints reprints of four little cookbooks on this one um you can buy this like you could get it on ebay i've seen it um but i picked it up when we visited salem because salem it's fun yeah yeah, yeah. um it, i mean there's some fun fun stuff in here from the way back boiled dressing for cold slaw yeah a nimble cake there's a syllabub so oh, a syllabub. Okay. Um, syllabub is like a a whipped frothy drink. Okay. Um, so gingerbread. There's no purple witch in there, is there? No purple witch in here. Now that that we added because I mean you know we had to. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean it's kind of fun to read through. Pie is spelled P Y E in here. Um. So yeah. Anyway, this is the book. You can still catch it on eBay. I'm sure. Or go to Salem. You can find lots of copies. Oh. I am not going to set it down on top of the grenadine, however. <laughs> no. Put it back over here. Oh, we're having mic. We're just having all sorts of issues. We need a sponsor. So. All right, folks. Maybe that stoner dude can sponsor us. <laughs> or Mr. Stoner dude. Um, there we go. So easy. Chowder. We're 45 minutes. Um, 45 minutes right on the nose. Grilled cheese. A great cocktail. It all goes really well together. Yep. And uh, it could be an easy lunch, great dinner. 45 minutes. In. Yeah. yeah. Brunch if you do an egg sandwich. Yeah. All good. So, brunch yeah. If you're going to do this for lunch or brunch and it's during the week, you might not want to do the cocktail, but you know. You might. You might want to do the cocktail. If you're brunching during the week, you and I wouldn't be at work. So That's true. We wouldn't be doing that. Right. 
um so yeah thanks for hanging out with us and yeah. and when watching us cook chowder and talking to us um we'll figure out what we're doing yeah i don't know we're gonna have to i don't know no telling we, we we might just deal with microphones for a while because we've got some some things coming up um phoebe and i certainly have some things coming up so that's true very very true noodle sorry anyway uh yeah so scallop chowder fancy sort of grilled cheese <laughs> with bacon who doesn't like bacon I know plenty of people don't like bacon but he likes bacon I so love there we go bacon, so, um yeah. all in 45 minutes <laughs> done we're eating yep, we're gonna eat <laughs> thanks for watching